Hi, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. We're at it again. We're going to drill another bore. I've got the bore driller in. I did a video recently about having another bore drilled at home. And one thing there was a lot of comment and strong feelings about was uh, divining or dowsing. In this video, I'm going to ask the driller all about it and see what his opinions are of it. We started off up the paddock and Lloyd had a look around and I had a bit of a play for a while too. He went round and round and eventually we moved to a different spot and we finally decided that that was the go, so that's what we did. Well, Lloyd, we've had a good look around. Are we going to get water? Yeah, mate. Plenty of water here. After Lloyd had put the legs down on the truck to stabilise it, he raised the mast up and got the thing organised and after that, of course, you've got to level it all up and make sure that it's going to go down straight in the ground. The cows thought it was good. They were really interested. They wanted to look at the truck and taste it, eat it. They really liked it. The truck has these levelling legs on it, one on the front and two on the back. And the truck's angle comparative to the ground can be adjusted so that the bore drill goes down straight in the ground and doesn't go off at an angle. Before the driller starts to drill, he adjusts the angle of the rod till it's going straight down in the ground. And here he's using a level just to check that it's going to go down dead straight. It was really cold and the old GM wasn't too keen to start, but it did. This engine runs a big compressor that blows air down through the drill rod as he's drilling and keeps the bit at the bottom clear of the dirt and sand and crushed rock as he's drilling. The next step, of course, is to drill down and drill the actual hole. And after that, he puts casing in and whatever, if it's successful. I won't put that in this video. There is another video with all that in it. And you can look at that if you're interested in that side of it. I only had to drill down at 12 metres and they hit water. They went a bit further and stopped drilling at that. This is the next day blowing the bore out after it was cased. What he does is put compressed air down the hole with a pipe and that forces the water out and gets rid of any sediment etc that might be in the casing but there wasn't much in there. Fair bit of fine sort of muddy sand but that cleared up after a while and come good. The pipe with the air in it come loose and blew out of the hole and she went right up in the air. You can probably see it here going up. Anyway, we had to put that back in but got that sorted out after a while. This thing here that he's got called a V-board and with that he measures how high the water is and from that measurement with a list of tables he can figure out how much water per hour you should be able to pump. Slow the air right down now and just got a little bit of air going in there to keep water flowing out just to clean it up and it's all looking really good, it's cleaning up really nicely, everything's going real good. Righto Lloyd, you did the calculation on the V-board, what did you come up with? Well, that's pumping there now as it is, is 10,800 litres an hour. Lloyd uses this meter to test the pH of the water, and ours was 6.2 out of the bore. He also tests the water for salt. This is the bore we just drilled. It's saying zero there now, so it's reading, right? And we'll fill him up, just quick, quick measurements. What's that say? 25? 25 parts per million. Hey. That's really good water. Well, the water ball was really successful. My average is pretty good, two for two. We'll now go on and do an interview with Lloyd about the divining and what he thinks about it. So, Lloyd, we went around and we had a look around and we decided on a spot. We both had a bit of a look and rec you reckon there was water there and I reckon there was. Well, I reckon there was something there. Mm. I'm not much of a diviner, but do it a bit. Do you always divine when you go to a site? Some people do on their own, and basically if they say, well, we don't care where the water is, just find some, then you'll do on. But it's a lot better usually if they do on it, I suppose, then it takes the onus off the driller. But yeah, you just do on if they want you to. So you go there, and sometimes they've already had someone do on it for them, have they? Yeah, a lot of times, like down south, they'd use a diviner and he'd put a peg in the ground and just 
back up like you only the driller you're not really a water maker but yeah you just drill a hole in the ground where they want but if you can divine well you run the stick over and have a look yourself too and yep what do you actually do to find to divine with. I mean, you know, you used to see that old thing in the old days and they'd have a green stick or a forky stick. I, I mean, I, I know you don't use a forky stick and I don't, but what what do you actually use? I just use this bit of wire or a bit of wire, just a bit of fencing wire. So that's but just normal, normal number 10 fencing wire, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's what I use number too. eight or whatever you can find around the place. Doesn't but matter the thickness? No, not really, not that much. As no. long as it's not too thin. So yeah, as long yeah. as it's not too thin. Some people, a lot of people can use the green stick and that sort of thing, but I can't, it doesn't work for me. But yep. And um, I can't get the depth or how much water there is or anything like that, but I yep. can certainly feel the water there, but I can't tell the quantity or anything like that. A lot of people can like stamp their feet or bounce the wire and all that sort of stuff and get a rough idea on how deep it is and how many streams there are. But yeah, I'm pretty basic at it and can find the water, but I don't know how much or how deep it is or anything like that. When we did that first bore, you said to me, oh, that's going to be down more than 30 metres. Mm. And it was, it was 33. Mm. And when we did the second bore, you said, oh, this is going to be pretty shallow. Mm. And it was that, well, really the water started to come in at 12 metres mm. and pretty heavy and fast. And you also said to me on that second bore, there's going to be a fair bit of water here, and there was. There's a lot of water there. Mm. You've been right both times. So what, what, what indicated to you of those factors? Like, how did you work that out? Yeah, oh, mainly because of the, looking at the ground, the geology of the ground comes into it as well. Yep. <clears throat> like it was down on the flats, most likely, and it's coming to a, a point. It could be a un, underground like a wash from years ago run yep. down there down the streams and if you're on the top of a hill well you look at the structure of the ground too sort of thing basically yep, the yep, geology right. and, like i just take a rough guess on what it could be they could a broken stream under here sort of thing where we put one yeah and that was pretty close to what i thought it'd be because yep. yeah, it's just just got to get an idea and have a look and see what okay. you think yeah. after boring quite a few bores i guess you get a feel for what different country normally has, I guess. Mm. Yeah, well, being being able to drill where you do divine, I suppose it gives you a good idea whether you can do it or not, because you always run the divine and stick over yourself, and it yeah. gives you pretty well proof straight away. Within a few hours, you know whether you can do it or not. So yeah, yeah. So it gives you a rough idea. And the longer you've been doing it, I guess, the better more idea you have of it, like you say. So Lloyd, what do you think about people who just say, oh, that's not true, it's all hokum? Yeah, I was a bit sceptical at the beginning myself too, but when you see it does work and you can feel it, and then you say, you, then you drill on it, and you say, shit, there is water there. Yeah. Then you get a bit more positive with it, but if you haven't ever seen and done it enough times, I suppose you probably become very sceptical of it. But yeah. being the driller, I guess, you go around drilling and you do hit the water where some people can do it. Yep. I'm not saying all diviners can do it, but yep. I've seen a couple of good ones that are really good, but other ones are sort of a bit far out. Yep. No, it does work. Yeah, it yeah. definitely works. Yeah. 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 Just some people can do it and some people can't. Yesterday, Lloyd, we had a look at a thing in India and they, they do the divining over there with a coconut, so I guess <laughs> a coconut, a green stick, a bit of wire. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to clean the coconut up and give it a go. You're going to give it a go with the coconut? <laughs> yeah, see what happens, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Had you ever heard of that before? No, I never heard of that one before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it they swear by it in India. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> if you like my videos, what about giving us a thumbs up? That would be really appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.